What is up beautiful people, it's Ms. Go here and in this video I want to break down the key differences between a product and a UX designer. So let's get right into it guys. Oh and by the way, the example that I'm about to walk you through has been heavily simplified just so it's a little bit easier to understand for those who are new to the field. So let's get right into it guys. Now before we jump into the key responsibilities and differences between the two, let me help you understand the responsibilities within a general company's org structure. In other words, organizational structure. And we're gonna do this one at a time. So at the top of a company, there is always going to be the C-suite. These are the chief executives, which are the CEO, the CMO, the CPO, the CTO, everyone who starts with chief in front of their title. And what do they do? They focus on strategy, okay? And sitting at the top of a company, right, focusing on strategy, what does that mean? So let's say we are planning out the roadmap or the product roadmap for the next financial year. The chief executives will probably be thinking about, okay, well, within this organization, we want to potentially increase our revenue by, let's just say, for example, 50% this year, right? So in the upcoming year, we'll increase our revenue by 50%, which means that we want to hit our potential target of, let's say, $30 million in revenue by the end of financial year. Now, that's their ultimate target. And then they're also gonna to start to think about, well, if we wanna to get to that point, we need to aggressively grow our team. So they might say, okay, let's also reinvest 30% of our revenue into growing our product team. So product team probably stands for engineers and also designers. Now, if we're doing that, if we really wanna hit that $30 million, we're growing our team, but we also need to expand our product offering. We need to grow the company and provide more features, better features for our customers. So they might say, okay, within the next couple of years, we might wanna roll out features and new products called X, Y, and Z, right? So these are new features and also products, okay? so. Once you've got these general navigational strategies, right? This is where the company is going. This is the direction we're going. Then this abstract plan gets pulled down, right? From the C-suite into the vice president's seat. So the vice president, they have departments in marketing. So there'll be a VP of marketing, a VP of product, a VP of technology. They have VPs who will turn this high level strategy into something a little bit more tangible, if you will. So these strategies, they will talk about 12 months and plus. And in this strategy done by the VPs, right? They focus more on the 12 month plan, right? So within the 12 months, what are we going to be achieving? So for example, let's just say the 30% uh, growth in the product teams. So let's just say we use this one for example. In the vice presidents, their general res responsibility would be to say, okay, well, let's go ahead and let's talk about what are we going to hire in the product team. So they might say, for example, 15 new engineers, okay? That's what we want to achieve. And then they might also say, okay, to also balance this out and to be able to push product out fast enough, we'll also hire five new UX designers because we're a bit low on UX design resource. So they start to think about within the 12 month, month mark, this is what, going, what we're going to achieve. And then more importantly, they're gonna focus on the product and new features. For us to launch X, Y, and Z features and products, within the 12 month mark, we might only be able to launch X and Y. So they might say, okay, within the next 12 months, let's focus on launching X and Y, right? These are new features or new products, okay? So new features, right? or the products. Now, this is still a little bit abstract because we're, tw we're talking about a 12 month horizon. So once this plan has been defined, then we take that and we actually give it to the product managers. Now, the product manager is a very sort of common stakeholder that you have probably dealt with before. They sort of lead the, quad, uh, the squad, lead the team, lead the pod, and they sort of work and they are the key stakeholders for the engineers and also the designers. So what they do is they're less involved around the hiring of these, uh, these product teams, but they're more focused around this. Their responsibility is to make sure that within every quarter, right? Every month, every quarter, and within the year, we are going to successfully launch features of product X and Y. So they, they focus more onto the day-to-day -to -day tasks, right? 
So the day-to-day tasks, and they focus more around each quarter. So Q1, 2, 3, and 4. And if this new concept, if this concept is new to you, quarters mean every three months. So within a year, each financial year, right, there are three, uh, four quarters. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, blah, 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 blah. So each quarter, there needs to be a deliverable, right? So if we want to launch, for example, we want to launch feature X in 12 months, what do we have to do in the four quarters to achieve that? So as a product manager looking to help launch these two features or products, I might say, for example, okay, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, I might say, let's launch version one of X. And then in Q2, when we learn a little bit more about how our customers use it, we refine it and we launch uh, uh, X 2.0. And then Q3, we focus on launching the new feature. And then in Q4, we test it and we launch 2.0 of uh, feature Y or product Y. So that is what a product manager's role is. It's really about, okay, here's the plan for the year. How do we tactically break it down so we actually launch everything on time, in budget, and do it uh, successfully? And then once we know what each quarter our responsibilities are as a company, then everything in this plan, right, inside this plan, gets passed on to the actual designers and the software engineers to build on the day-to-day basis. So UX designers and software engineers, we really focus around, right, the day-to-day, okay? So when we focus on the day-to-day, we really, every single day or every single week, in other words, each sprint, we are pushing out these features that we talk about up here. So this goes down here, okay? So let's reiterate. As you can see, if we go now from the bottom up, we can see that if a UX designer and a software engineer, if we work efficiently and we stick to our plan, we will check off the plan for the product managers, Q1, 2, and 3, and 4, right? If we check off all these tasks on time for each quarter, we then meet the vice president's plan, right? So X and Y, X and y features are launched. So if we meet the vice president's plan, we then ultimately help the C-suite, right, the company as a whole, reach their goal of launching X, Y, and Z products and features, which ultimately contributes to the ultimate goal of any organization or company, which is to make more money, right? So hopefully that helps you understand the responsibilities and how responsibilities are flown throughout a company, because this is important. This is important for you to understand if you want to understand the the differences between UX and product. So let's recap on the responsibilities of the product manager. The product manager is really about the business. How do we tactically get things out on time? How do we prioritize things? How do we make sure that we are meeting our timelines efficiently so we are actually helping the business move forward? And then the UX designer focuses on executing or everything about the user. How do we really delight the user? How do we deliver the best experience for the user? So with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the key differences between UX and product. So as you can see, UX design, and this is not the ex- exhaustive list of all the responsibilities. These are just to help paint the idea in the picture. But generally, all those, res- uh, all those responsibilities that have to do with the user sits under the UX designer. So you talk about user research, wireframes, UI design, prototyping, user testing, testing even more. So that is all the responsibilities of a UX designer. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. We need people to specialize in this. But on the other hand, the product designer does everything that the UX designer does. But they also focus on business acumen, product management, feature prioritization, product strategy, managing design sprints, being analytical and outcomes driven. They also help the business because they understand it through experience, how to turn all these responsibilities and balance it with this. So if they are faced with a challenge, a design challenge, they don't just focus on what is best for the user, but they also focus on what is also great for the business. And that is the key difference between a product and UX designer is that product designers are able to balance the business and product side of things with the user in mind as well. So what does that look like in a real life situation? So if I go ahead and take a look over here, 
Let's imagine that we are working on a new project together, right? And let's say I'm the client and I'm asking you, right? I'm asking you, well, I've got a new app that I wanna build. Um, where do we start, right? So you're the designer and I'm asking you, I've got a new product I wanna build. I wanna build a new marketplace app. I wanna be able to have an iOS app where potentially I'm a pet owner and I wanna find local trusted vets. That's the problem I'm trying to solve. What are some of those questions that you would be asking to better understand the project? I want you to pause this video really quickly and just have a quick think about it. There's no need to rush. So give it a couple of seconds and just have a think about what would be the first couple of questions that I actually ask and what do I actually want to learn and understand before I dive into this project. All right, so hopefully you've got some questions in mind. So some questions that a UX designer might ask is, okay, well, first off, do you have an existing project, uh, existing product, right? I guess that makes total sense. And you might also ask, well, have you done any user research, right? User research. Have you got some validation, right? So would, how, how did you measure your validation? And you might also ask, have you done any user testing, right? And then you also might ask, do you have a design system? You want to understand how was the designs actually created? So do you, do you have a design system? And you're probably going to ask further questions around things around the user experience, right? The user themselves. But as a product designer, some of those key questions that you would also be asking beyond these ones that you have already asked as a UX designer is that, well, what's your activation rate, right? Activation rate. And that means like, what is the percentage of free users activating into paid users, right? So you also want to ask about the business model, business model, because you want to understand how do you craft a product that not only helps the users get value, but you also want to understand how can you help the business make more money as well. So you really want to understand, okay, what is the actual business model? And these are some of the questions that you'll be asking very early on in the conversation. Sometimes maybe even before these UX questions, because you were so business driven and product driven. And then another question that you might be asking is, well, what is your go-to market strategy? What are your acquisition channels, right? So acquisition channels, so your acquisition channels and also your go-to market strategy. And what does that mean? So go to market strategy, right? What, is it, what does that mean? So when you were designing a product, when you're thinking about the strategies, designing the experience, Yes, that is important, but you also need to understand that with a new startup, new product, what's also really important is how are you going to acquire your customers? Not If you don't consider that and you just focus on the users, well, yes, that is great, but in the end, if you don't have any customers and you have the best user experience, well, what are the chances that you're going to succeed, right? You wanna know that, you wanna know the answers to these two questions because as a product designer, you need to help this startup, your client or the company that you're working for actually attain customers before you even feed them into your experience. So these are the questions that a lot of designers will be asking once they've got a lot of experience in UX and in product. And these are just a few questions that you'll probably be asking as a product designer. And this is not the exhaustive list of everything that you'll be asking. These are just some of those, ex those examples. So. If you are interested in actually becoming a product designer, it's not that you can just simply flick a switch and become a product designer. And a lot of designers are throwing this title around. Becoming a product designer requires years of experience and actually having really tactical insights into what actually moves the needle for a business. You have to be confident about your strategies and the only way that you can be confident about your strategies is by doing it yourself. Being down in the trenches, testing, failing and succeeding so you know what works and what doesn't. Now, I know for a fact that a lot of designers are throwing around the title and there is no rush to becoming a product designer and product design isn't for everyone. Some people don't enjoy the business side of product. They really focus on the user experience side and they really wanna make sure that the user is in the forefront, that the focus is really on the user and less about the business and they let the product managers deal with the business. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding on the key differences between a UX and a product designer so you can make a better assessment on whether or not this is the type of role that you wanna get yourself into.
Now, with all that being said, remember that every single organization will define and utilize product designers in different ways. And it is really up to you to get clarity on what the business expectations are from the product designer. So if the product world actually interests you, rest assured, I've got your back. I am working on my very own product and UX design course. And I do plan to be launching this sometime in the new year. All right, guys, hopefully you found this video extremely useful. I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. What the?